Stakeholder licenses are a very effective way to use Azure DevOps, especially for PMs and other personas like that, and especially because you can have unlimited stakeholders users for free. But what can you actually do with those licenses? Well, we will discover that today in this 3 Minutes Friday. Hi everybody, welcome back to Carter Dave and welcome to a new episode of the 3 Minutes series. In each episode, I will try and explain a concept, showcase a product or service, or yet try to teach you something and all in just three minutes. Short videos, big value, hopefully. Today we talk about Azure DevOps and its stakeholder licenses. And I know it's quite confusing sometimes when talking about licenses, so I wanna go deeper in the stakeholder licenses and see who are they for and what you can actually do with those licenses that, by the way, are completely free. But before we start, take a minute to subscribe to this channel if you haven't already, and if you wanna learn more about DevOps, especially with Azure DevOps and GitHub, just click on the subscribe button below right now and turn on the notifications so you will not miss any new video like this. All right, let's start the clock and get into it. First of all, as I said a few times already, you can have unlimited stakeholder users completely for free, but of course, since they are for free, they have some limitations. With stakeholder access, you can add and modify work items, manage, build, and release pipelines, and view dashboards. You can also check project statuses and provide directions, feedback, feature ideas, and business alignment to the team. You can also perform administrative tasks if you're granted administrative permissions or if you're added to an admin group. So yes, as you can see, there are some limitations, but they may not be that big of a deal for you. But enough talking, let's see this live. All right, here we have two instances of Azure DevOps open on the same project. On the left, in the dark theme, basic user. On the right side, instead, you can see the access as stakeholder user. First thing we notice is that we have this banner over here that says clearly that we've been assigned a stakeholder access, and so we will have some limited features. And if we expand the menu, we immediately see some differences. In the overview section, we don't have the analytics views, the repos tab, is completely missing, as well as the test plans. Let's go to the dashboard section, for example, on both. As you can see, the dashboard looks similar. Let's say, for example, I want to remove this widget that is not working. But if I do that as a stakeholder user, as you can see here, I cannot see the source file, I cannot configure it, and of course, I cannot delete it. Let's move to the wiki. On the left side, you can see that I can either create a project wiki or I can publish code as a wiki. On the right side, I don't have any option. Stakeholders cannot create new wikis from scratch. And if you create a project wiki, then stakeholders have access. But with the default permissions, they cannot edit the wiki page. If we decide to use the code wiki instead, stakeholders will not have access to it. Let's talk about Azure boards. Once again, there's a difference in the menu. Basic users have access to plans, stakeholders don't. As a stakeholder, I can add a new work item and I can update the status of some work item by drag and drop into different columns. However, stakeholders cannot change the backlog priority. For example, if I try to move this up and down, while of course I can do it as a basic user and I can't update the fields that are displaying in the card, as you can see over here. Finally, I can't use the mapping pane and I cannot exercise forecasting. If we talk about pipelines instead, I cannot see the pipelines and I cannot manage library and task groups. And even the environments look different. As you can see, I do have one environment, but by default that is not visible to the stakeholder. And if I try to create one, by default I do not have enough permission to do so. What I can do though is I can view the release definition, I can actually approve or cancel the release, and this is useful if you want to have project manager or project owner giving the approval for features, tests, etc. There is actually a way to give more access on the pipelines to the stakeholders. You can go to the preview features, select the organization, and then enable this to give full access to Azure pipelines for stakeholders. If we enable this, and now you see that I have the full experiences with pipelines, library, task group, and so on and so forth. What we have seen applies to private projects only. In fact, on public projects, the story is different. As you can see on the screen, stakeholders have a much broader access to features when working on public projects. I hope this video has been helpful for you to better understand what the stakeholder licenses in Azure DevOps allows you to do. 
Let me know in the comment section below if you have any more questions about this topic. Thanks so much for watching, I really hope you enjoyed it. Hit the like button below, subscribe if you haven't already and I see you in the next video here at Coder Dave. <laughs>